The beauty of dentistry is that you have the opportunity to take someone out of pain and restore their teeth to function and aesthetics. In this case below, you're going to learn about how to predictably endotreat a mandibular incisor and restore it in under an hour. Hey, it's Ash Mark from All Things Dentistry, where we share those unwritten dental hints and tips to better your dental practice. And if you're new here, make sure you click on that subscribe button. All the links to the things we mentioned in the video can be found in the description box below. And stick around to the end of the video to download my free endo gear guide, which reviews all the gear that I use for all my cases. So let's jump into it. We have a huge caries lesion on tooth number 42. And then to your left, you can see the radiograph and the caries. The mandibular right central incisor has decay as well. And you can see now my glove right through this decay. It's amazing actually that this tooth is still vital. It's inflamed though. This is a quick endo exam. You know, cold test is super critical and this is an irreversibly inflamed tooth and this, that, ex ouch, that hurts. Sorry, That's a perfect that... example of lingering cold, lingering pain to cold. I'll finish with a percussion test. I remember watching someone use their other hand to guide the handle and I've used that since. So you can see my left hand guiding the mirror handle so it doesn't slip off the tooth. Rather than a nerve block for this case, I elected to use a buccal infiltration and supplement with a PDL injection and lingual injection. She doesn't have any posterior teeth on the mandibular right and left, so my reference points are gone. And we wanted to get cracking with this case because I was moving late as usual. So after buccal infiltration, I use the ligma jet to inject down the PDL. At the same time, I'm going to inject in the papilla. I've, this is how I do my palatal injections and my lingual injections. I'm going to numb up the tissue the lingual just a little bit through the papilla and then hit it with the lingual injection. Just to make sure that anesthesia is effective and works, I'm going to check with a cold test again after we do anesthesia and make sure she doesn't feel anything during the procedure. I felt things during my dental appointments before and it's not super cool at all. After placing the rubber dam, I'm going to use opal dam and now what I'm using is a Munzburr, a long shank slow round burr to remove the decay and then I'm going to finish up kind of this enamel corner with a number two surgical length round burr. All the decay is gone and now boom you can see where the pulp chamber is that's the extent of it and just now is where I have my access into the pulp chamber. So now what we need to do is I need to reseal off the tooth from the oral cavity with more opal dam just to make sure we don't get leakage of that irrigant into the oral cavity. And now what we're going to do is start shape cleaning, shaping our coronal two-thirds with our Wave 1 Gold Primary. And that is the beauty of this file, is I use it as my orifice opener and for cleaning and shaping. I'm going to get my working length of the number 10 file. This is to the red bar on the Pro Mark, and I'm going to subtract 0.5 millimeters. So now I'm going to clean and shape to 20 millimeters with my primary file. because it, But because the tooth is crowded, the rubber stop doesn't want to go all the way down. So I have two options. I can either extract the other tooth, or I can take the rubber stop off and use the engraved markings on the file. So you can see here the engraved markings are 18, 19, 20, and 22. So I'm going to recheck my working length after my primary file. The mandibular incisors have a 40% chance of having two canals, and it's usually the lingual canal that's missed during treatment. The access preparation isn't brought lingual enough, and it's missed. So I'm going to use my Munzburr to trough lingually and try to find another canal if it's there. And those are the five basic types of canal vari variations according to Bertucci. What are we looking for? Well, this is another case where after troughing for the lingual canal, you can see the outline of the darker calcified pulp material. And now after shaping it. So I'll open all these cases to my medium file. And this is going to be cut to 20 millimeters. When I'm at length, I look at the end of the file for debris. And that means that I'm shaping the apical third to 3506. So irrigate, irrigate, and more irrigation. We're going to activate our, can, our irrigant with our endo activator. We're going to fit our gutta percha point. And we've chopped and I can't see another canal, but let's do one more look with a curved file to try to engage anything of that canal lingually. So I'm going to place my file in, I'm going to rotate it lingually and see if I can catch a snag. I wasn't able to get a snag or any find any other type of canal in this tooth, so we're going to drive their paper points. 
and we'll place our BC sealer in our coronal half the tooth, place our gutta percha, pump it a couple times, and take a working length radiograph. We're going to sear the coronal portion of the gutta percha, pack it down, burnish the gutta percha into the walls of the canal, and plan to start restoring it. So I've monkeyed around trying to get a mylar strip and I mate my wedge into place. And because this tooth is rotated, it's fairly, as you all know, it's complicated to try to get a decent restoration in here. So we're going to keep the rubber dam on because it serves a number of purposes. One, dentin bonding, enamel bonding is extremely technique sensitive and we want to make sure we have a, an absolutely dry field. And two, we also just completed a great root canal. Why do we want to ruin it and introduce bacteria into it? And three, well, keeps the lips and the cheeks out of the way, so it makes it way quicker. So we've light cured and now it's time to finish. I try to keep my rubber dam on for as long as possible. It just seems to speed everything up for the, for the, for the entire procedure by keeping the lips and the cheek out of the way. This is just basic finishing with a flame burr. The long shank munts burr was super helpful because I could see what I was doing and the head of the handpiece wasn't in the way. And now we're just going to use some diamond polishing paste just to give it a nice quick finish. And essentially we're done within about an hour. If you found this video helpful, we'd really appreciate a share, thumbs up or a comment. And don't forget to get your free endo gear guide in the links below. I'll see you soon.